Welcome back to my channel today. If you, uh, if you are new, welcome. This is a channel about photography, digital arts, you know, a lot of different stuff. If you were here from one of my other videos, welcome to a new video. You get to see me for the first time. This is my second video about photography. The first one was about still life, so I'll put it right here if you have not yet checked it out. Uh, so if you want to go check that out, you should go for it. It's, it's pretty awesome. So uh, if you want some easy pointers on how to take cool still lifes, you should check that out. Today we are talking about something that I really like. It is my favorite type of photography. It is called macro photography. Now if you don't know what macro is, it is taking something that is very small and blowing it up very you know, large. So like taking pictures of insects, coins, whatever. It's one of the most vastly creative types of photography because there's so much we don't know and uh, there's so much that we miss every day. So when you take pictures of it with a macro lens or your, even your phone, you can discover things that you had never imagined before. So that's why it is my favorite. You get to see a world that you do not normally get to see, and it's very exciting to discover uh, new things all the time. Now for macro photography, it is common to be outside where lighting is better because for macro you need a lot of light. Because your lens, your field of view is very small and it doesn't let a lot of light in. So you need a lot of light inside or just be outside. So that's why I have lots of, lots of lighting <laughs> around my room and this room is got all white walls so it is easy to reflect light off from outside and light gets doesn't get absorbed as easily. Now macro lenses come in all shapes and sizes. What I have that I'll be using today is a 100 millimeter macro lens um, uh, from Canon. There are other lenses, nicer lenses that are more crisp image quality. Now if you want even closer zoom you can go ahead and look on Amazon or eBay or wherever you buy things online or even your local photography store. Wherever is close you can find um, extension tubes. Now these work with not just macro lenses, they work with all lenses. You can clip them on. Let's see if I can get this out. So basically, will it focus? Yeah, they look like this. They're basically just a series of tubes. They, uh, they come apart, so you can see they, they detach. So basically, they are just a series of tubes that you can attach onto your lens already. All these do is they extend the distance between your lens and the camera. If you, actually I'll, I'll open both sides so that you can see. As you can see, they're completely hollow. There's no, there's no lens in there, it's just, it's just tubes. But what these have, you can make your own out of like paper and uh, Pringles cans or whatever. But what's nice about these is they have the sensors. So when you're zooming, they still allow you to use all your zoom functions that you would normally get to use with the macro lens. All they do is attach onto the lens itself and provides a greater distance between the camera and the lens, allowing greater zoom. So think about it like a magnifying glass. If you ever use a magnifying glass and you have it focused on something, as you pull it away, it gets you know, bigger until you get too far and then it's, it doesn't work anymore. So that's essentially how a macro lens extension tube works. Now today I'll be using a light box that I made myself. It's very easy to make a light box. If you've ever tried, you've probably done it or you've bought one. If you want to make it yourself, it's quite simple. All you need is a box and some tissue paper. If you want to see a tutorial on how you can make it, I can do that easily, but you can probably find tutorials online as I did. So with that, let's go out and find some different macro subjects to photograph. Let's go outside. It is raining a bit, but that's okay. Hopefully, stay inside, cat. You're fine. Uh, it is raining a bit, so, but it shouldn't be too hard to find anything. What it really comes down to is just being able to see something that you would normally not have, um, that would normally not be, you know, noticed, and identify that as something that you could bring in and take a picture of. Like leaves. Leaves are great. You can take awesome pictures of leaves, but I want something, I'm looking for something a little different. Like uh, this. Now when we, you want to focus there? Now when we bring this inside and put it under the light box, this could be, it's got a lot of little detail on there that could end up being really cool when, you know, shot with the macro lens and extension tube. So let's, let's keep that. Oh yeah, here, check these out. So we got these little, these little plants here, these little, these little flowers that aren't quite open yet. So maybe not, oh, here's something cool. This could be really cool. All right, this is probably, probably not good. We're gonna walk into this, these people's backyard and we're gonna borrow a flower. Yeah, there's some really pretty little flowers. So we're gonna grab just one of these. Now that we found some things inside, I'm gonna pull out the light box, put on the macro lens and extension tubes. Uh, I'll actually, I'll start with just the macro lens and then I will put on the extension tubes so that you can see a comparison. 
and we'll go over some of the different things that you know you can look at when taking macro pictures. So let's do that first. So as awful as this light box looks, it really doesn't matter because all that needs to look good is about this much of it because you're you're taking macro, remember? So what I like to do, and this is totally up to you, I have a I have actually I have both options. I have a black poster board that I can put behind and a white poster board that I can put behind. And basically what that does is it provides a clean background for this. It leans up against the, the black paper inside there so you can you don't see uh, you don't see any gross cardboard or any of the, the tissue paper that's all wrinkled behind it. It provides a clean thing because remember with macro what you're dealing with is a very small field of view. So essentially everything that isn't in focus is going to be very blurry. So what it'll just look like is a completely plain background. I like to use white because the lighting in the room that I take pictures is minimal. So it allows a more reflective surface for the, uh, for the light. We're just going to place that on top. And when we're focused in on the flower, you won't see much else. But it provides some sort of uh, background at least for it. But now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in way in close to the flower. This is just with the regular macro lens. You can see we can focus in all the way. We can, we can actually get in really close if we want to. So let's, yeah, let's focus up. Let's focus up right there, right on like the very small little tip of the, uh, the stamen there. So yeah, you can see we get in pretty close and as you can also see, it's extremely blurry the rest of the flower because the field of view that you have with a macro lens is extremely minimal. So you can see we, as we focus, there's a little bar of focus that moves. And we can we could even get a little closer, but we don't have that much. When you're dealing with macro, it's extremely small micro movements that you gotta use. So you don't have a ton of options. Oh, we're, see, we're too close there. It gets very difficult to uh, focus on anything. So yeah, there we go. Now that is just what the, uh, this is just regular macro. We have not put the extension tubes on yet. And you can see a very, very small field of focus. But this is, again, just with the regular lens. So we can get it even closer with the, the extension tubes. Yeah, see? Just those little end pieces. All the little details. And last but not least, we have our stick with the moss on it. Now let's see if we can find a good side where there's lots of detail. Now remember, because you're dealing with such a small parallel field of view, you sometimes want to make sure if you're taking pictures of something like this, you want to lay it out longer so that what you have in focus is a lot more than diagonal where it's just a small little bar that you have more to look at. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the extension tubes so that you get an idea of how big of a difference just three little tubes can make when dealing with a macro like this. Now, what I've just done is I added the extension tubes on and we are now looking at that the bark in the background at the furthest distance zoom. So you can already see kind of how big of a difference the extension tube makes because that is really close. And what I'm gonna do now is because I don't feel like moving my camera, which is on a tripod and all that, I'm just gonna slide very delicately the entire light box. Okay, so now remember, remember we were dealing with micro adjustments before with the, the, the regular macro lens. With this, you need even more tiny movements. And any movement you make at all will dramatically shake the table. That's why you end up doing a lot of these super macro, is what I like to call it, pictures inside in a controlled environment as opposed to outside where you have wind. Wind is the worst thing that you can have when trying to take macro pictures because they just ab it absolutely shakes everything and unless it's sunny enough to get, you know, have a high enough sh shutter speed, you don't really get a lot of options there. You can see how close we get and looking at the petals, you can see every little detail. It's incredible. Also with super macro, it's almost essential that you have it on a tripod and also use a remote. These remotes are super cheap. They're probably under 20 bucks. You can pick them up and that way you don't have to touch the camera to take a picture. You can just use the button and you can take really clean images. Let's take a look at the stem here because the stem has a ton of detail on it. Look at this. Let's just move it in. Yeah, look at that. It's incredible. You, would, you can't see that with the naked eye, 
but those are tiny little sprouts on the tiny stem of the of the flower so if we zoom out all the way you can see maybe move that far, far away enough yeah well that's that's good enough you can barely see it even that's the furthest zoom you can get with the the super macro lens on um, so if we zoom in all the way I can I'll move that in again and you can see tiny little details that you would never even notice before you can see the little ends of the grass and you can if we move it away uh, we move it in you can see the tiny 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 flowers from just that little little weed we found outside so that is all I have to say about macro photography it's very simple uh, if you have the resources but you can do it with really anything I have a camera that is a Canon EOS 70D which I'm currently using to record it records the 1080p it's a great camera really good for macro because it's got a a, a rotation a uh, a viewing screen that is t uh, not only touch screen but also rotates so when you're taking pictures of stuff that is low to the ground you don't have to get on your stomach but you can do it with anything you can use your phones the iPhone 7 and the Google Pixel have incredible cameras additionally if you wanted to spend the money it's really about how much you're willing to spend but you don't need a lot of money you can take incredible pictures with terrible cameras and terrible pictures with incredible cameras it all comes down to you as a photographer so if you want to spend the money and you're you know you're already a good photographer you can always buy like lens kits for smartphones they just clip on and they're really helpful uh, if you want to take macro or fisheye or anything they're just an extra little thing you can throw in there but it's they're not necessary macro is a unique kind of photography that allows you to look at the world as uh, you wouldn't normally be able to i urge you to go out in your world and find things that are small and take pictures of them and blow it up so that you can see it as you never would before from coins to flowers it really doesn't matter but it all comes down to what you find interesting and what your ideal macro picture is. So I urge you to go out, take pictures, share them with myself and with your friends and post them. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see what you guys do. So if you have any suggestions for me to take pictures of with my lens kit and camera, I am totally open to that. Yeah, comment, message me on Instagram. The link to my Instagram will be in the description below. So if you want to share what you find, with me, I would love that and inspire me to take pictures of my own. I'm always looking on the internet for inspiration and on Instagram for what you guys take pictures of. So with that, I hope you guys can go out and find things in your world to share with others. And until next time, keep capturing everything around you.